We continue to explain the 1943 World Series. Due to the issues of stadium availability and the need for the league to reward their fan base, the series would be played in eight different cities over a two-week period. The first game would find the Grays and the Barons facing off at the Grays' home stadium, Griffith Stadium, in Washington, D.C., that they shared with the Washington Senators. Alfred Saylor of the Barons pitched a six-hitter while his teammates like Felix McLaren, Clyde Spearman, Lester Lockett, and Haas Walker turned four runs by the seventh. Cool Papa Bell answered with one. The Grays tried to rally, and Buck Leonard scored, but the Barons won four to two. Game two moved up the road to Baltimore's Bugle Field. The game seesawed back and forth into 12 innings and stayed tied 5-5. to The Barons brought in Gentry Jessup from the Chicago Giants to pitch, who, along with double-duty Radcliffe, was the reasons for the complaints later about unfair team pairings. The game got called due to midnight wartime curfews. Game three moved back to Griffith and went 11 innings. Roy Partlow pitched for the Grays. Partlow was removed from the game after McLaren broke the tip of his finger on a line drive to his hand in the fifth with the Grays up 3-0. That would lead to him and his replacement, Ray Brown, allowing three barren runs. The game remained tied into the 11th when Josh Gibson returned to the game. The bases were loaded by Barron's pitcher Johnny Markham. Then Papa Bell hit an RBI single, scoring Harris and giving the Grays the win. Game 4 moved to Chicago and Comiskey, with the teams tied 1-1. One one. Grays pitcher John Wright and the tough hitting by Gibson and Leonard turned an outing by Barron Grady Lefty McGinnis into a 9-0 route. The games then moved to Columbus, Ohio. At Columbus's Redbird Stadium, the Grays had a comfortable lead of 6-2 in the 5th. Then the Barons tied it in the 6th, and then rallied in the 7th with 5 runs. The Grays came back in the 8th with 4 against Saylor on a Josh Gibson Grand Slam, but it wasn't enough. The games moved to Victory Field in Indianapolis with the series tied 2-2. Two and two. In Indy, Wright shut the Barons out 8-0. The Grays had 5 runs in the 7th inning. The game shifted to the south in Birmingham's home field of Rickwood. W.C. Handy spoke before the game. The game was a real pitcher's duel between Markham and Partlow. The game finally broke in the 11th on a 0-0 tie when Ed Steele brought in Sloppy Lindsay to score. The Grays tried to answer back with their own Chicago ringer Ralph Wyatt, but he got thrown out at home. The series would then move to Montgomery, where the Grays would pull out an 8-4 World Series victory.